begin with your opening statement and then we'll open it up to questions for student athletes. Um, thank you all for being here and your continued coverage. I think that was a heck of a basketball game. First, I want to credit Baylor, who, who I think came out and were a terrific version of what they're really good at. And I think that speaks a lot to their players and their coaching staff. Um, getting here and then on this stage being a really good version of, of themselves. Um, I'm so proud of our team. Uh, we're in the Elite Eight. We have an incredible group of young people who just care about winning more than anything else. Uh, we had to gut check them a little bit in that, you know, after the third quarter. And to me, when you can come out with the win, that's the greatest thing of all, that we, we took, you know, we took a little hit there. Um, we got popped in that third quarter, and we came back and regrouped and decided we have to be a really good version of us because Baylor's coming with everything they have. And I thought that was the difference, our response in the fourth quarter. So super proud and excited. And the main thing is we want to keep going with this team. I, I, I want to stay with them as long as we possibly can. So we're excited to be practicing tomorrow and, and playing on Monday. Can everyone hear all right? Okay. Can we get the, mo can we get the uh, speakers up? We'll do the best we can, obviously, the uh, HVAC's out of our control. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up some questions to student athletes. Okay, can you hear me okay? Okay. Um, Bella Munson with the next. Um, Juju, with four minutes left in the game, your head coach called you over and said something to you for a minute there. Um, and then after that, it seemed like it was clutch play after clutch play, whether it was assisting, rebounding, free throw line. What did she say to you, and what, if anything, did it change in that moment for you? I'm not gonna lie, I don't really remember, but I think it was just a collective like sense of urgency. I mean, just just knowing what was on the line and our position, us being down um, during that stretch. So it was just a matter of turning the game around, and I know um, I had to do something, or, or you know. Um, so I just I was glad that I got the opportunity to to help my team with with some free throws and stuff like that. Over here next, and then Lindsay. Hi, Michelle Smith, the next. Congratulations. Um, for Rhea, you guys have not been in this spot before. Did you learn something about yourselves today, or was it? Or did you already know going in that you guys would be able to handle a situation in a game like this in a close game down the stretch? Humbly, I, I have faith in my team because we, we've, um, we've faced adversity a ton of times, and when, when we are against adversity, our back's up against the wall, we actually rise to the occasion. I mean, these two are like extreme competitors, so they're coming into huddles before Coach G can even tell us our next direction, direction saying what we need to do. And if, if I'm in a dogfight, I would rather be in a dogfight with this team. Lindsay? Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Ju, I know you were um, giving Kenzie a hard time yesterday about being old and not being able to get in the back of the van and whatnot, yeah. but she's a pretty important player. And I wondered, what have you learned from her and all her wisdom? Man, she's like Yoda. Um, she's <laughs> 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 nah, she's just super smart. Um, all the Ivies, but but Kenzie especially, I think we have a special relationship, just like bet and rookie type vibe. But she's always just um, encouraging me and, and really um, speaking to me in times when I need it during the game. So she's just a great leader, and I'm just glad to to have that type of leadership my first year. Sabrina, Sabrina Merchant, the Athletic. Uh, for any of the players, it seemed like any time you guys needed a big play, especially defensively in the fourth quarter, Caitlin Davis was there. Uh, what can you say about just her effort throughout the comeback? Yeah, I, can y'all hear me? Oh. Uh, yeah, I just think that's like who Katie is as a player. Um, you know, she's always going to make the gritty, the tough play. Um, and I think wherever, you know, wherever, whatever team she's on, obviously I battled her last year, like whatever, wherever she goes, she brings that with her. So that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, and her, those plays are huge for us down the stretch. We depend on her. Um, and it definitely, you know, I, I definitely don't take it for granted. I don't think any of us do. She was huge. Go ahead. David Yapko, it's from the next. Uh, for Juju, I mean, you know, obviously we see uh, 30 points, you know, the defensive matchups that you took in, in the fourth quarter there. But I still think, you know, one of the, the more underrated aspects of your game is your playmaking, you know, and, and not just necessarily getting assists, but, you know, knowing when to make the right reads out there, you know, and just kind of how, how's that part of your game just developed a little bit, you know, throughout this season and, and here into the tournament? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's still developing. I think that, um, even though I had 30, it wasn't my best night. Um, but honestly, just doing whatever it is um, to win, I think that's priority always. So whether it's 
defensively making the right play, um, getting off of it, like stuff like that. Um, just whatever I need to do. Uh, Casey Kaslander with the Daily Trojan. Rhea, you made that free throw at the end to effectively put the game out of reach. Can you take us through that moment, especially playing in a pro-level arena at, in the Sweet 16? So, the, believe it or not, I didn't purposely try to do that. When I got the rebound, I always looked for Juju and Kenzie, and I seen like, I, I seen a ton of green jerseys around Juju. So I was like, okay, let me think quick. And before I could get off of it, I seen it was like Baylor jerseys swarming me. So. I go to the line. Um, I remember just watching Juju at the line all game. I was like praying, God, God, please let her make this. Please let her make this. So I said, you know what? Now it's my turn. Let me, let me like call in my inner Juju. Just knock down this first free throw, and after that, I just kind of rejoiced. Over there, and then Alexa. <laughs> Juju, uh, Luke Evans. Name and affiliation, County. please. Yeah, uh, Luke Evans, Orange County Register. Uh, Juju, that that fourth quarter. I think about four minutes left tie game you go down and transition and there's two defenders in front of you and you know you don't you don't look anywhere else you just go right at them and attack and obviously at that point you're not shooting well from the floor I mean what what in your mentality in that moment and just in that fourth quarter in general just allows you to kind of keep pushing in those moments and be confident in yourself yeah I mean it really all uh, boils down to the trust that that everybody has in me um despite me not shooting well tonight. I think that um, when the game's on the line, um, I think my teammates trusted me to, to attempt a bucket, and luckily we uh, came out on top with that one. But man, we just, we just want to win. And, and whatever it is, I can contribute or, or try to do for the team that I'm going to do it. Are you recording video? OK. Uh, Alexa Philbu, ESPN for McKenzie and Raya. Kind of the similar question there when even if Juju's not having her best night and knowing that she has before made those game winning plays or really clutch plays in the right moments where have you seen that really develop the most and how much trust do you have in her that even if she's not shooting well that she'll be able to do what it takes to help you guys win she's a competitor I, I could trust her all my life like when it come down to winning she gonna do what she has to do like she's coming into the huddle after the third quarter fired up like let's get our shit to our sorry, sorry about that <laughs> well that's what she said but let's get ourselves together <laughs> and um so like with that of course we're gonna trust trust what she had to say yeah I just to add on to that like the Jew is a winner and and we see the work that she puts in so I never lack confidence in her. We have all the, all the trust in the world. Um, and like was mentioned before, she's not just a scorer, she's a playmaker. You know, she gets off the ball when they come to her, um, getting our bigs a lot of easy dump downs. Um, so, you know, we've seen that time and time again throughout the season, all the way back to when we played Penn State in the Bahamas, you know, so we've just seen that growth and we trust in her. Got a question yes. up front. <laughs> Uh, Thomas Johnson, Daily Trojan. Juju, you went to the free throw line seven times in the fourth quarter, and you already talked about how your confidence stayed there, but how do you stay calm in those type of moments? Um, uh, <clears throat> sorry. I think just knowing what's on the line. I mean, um, I wasn't really able, like I said, not the best shooting night for me, so I had to make sure that I capitalized off of easy and, and free buckets, honestly. So. Um, I always practice free throws. We practice in practice, so it, it's really nothing new. So, um, yeah. Lindsay? Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Kenzie, I know you've had quite a circuitous route throughout um, college basketball, but I just wondered, you seem to play with a lot of joy. How much fun are you having this year? And I wondered, who was the, when you kissed, uh, waved a kiss to the crowd, blew a kiss to the crowd after you hit that three. Who was that for? Uh, that was for all the Trojan fans. I feel like we had a great showing of Trojan fans, by the way. Um, and my, my whole family is out there, so. But yeah, I, I, this is, I'm having the best time of my life. Uh, this is by far, like, the most fun season of basketball I've ever had. Um, and I think it has everything to do, like, with my teammates um, and this staff. Um, and obviously winning, winning is really fun, too. <laughs> okay, Gary, we'll have our last question for the student athletes. Uh, Kerry Eggers, KerryEggers.com. Juju, uh, your struggle at the shooting today, how much of that was just an off day and how much of it was their defensive effort? Uh, I'm just, I mean, the defense was great. Like, very um, competitive always. I mean, we knew Baylor was going to bring the heat. They're known for their defense. Um, but, I, you know, me just having confidence in what I'm able to do, I would say it's, it was an off night for me personally. 
Congratulations on the win. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, soon athletes are dismissed. Thank you. Love Jeezy. All right, we'll open up the questions now for uh, Coach Gottlieb. We've got 10 minutes. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, if you haven't had a question yet, we'll start over here. Or, uh, Luke Evans, Orange County Register. Lindsay, how, how impactful was, was Rhea tonight, you know, just a, as far as kind of imposing her will early, seven first quarter rebounds, uh, and, and how key has she been down the stretch for, for this team? Uh, well, you can see that She's a joy to be around, um, uh, and that's pretty much Rhea all the time. But we knew that her imposing her will in the paint was going to be important. I mean, I looked at the stat sheet, and I was like, wow, Rhea, you had 16 rebounds. But I'm not surprised because she was out there swooping everything up. Um, I, you know, I thought she was terrific in practice getting ready for this, understanding her assignment. She finished. Uh, I thought she was really, really good. And, I, again, I, I've said this before, she and Clarice play off each other really well. I thought Clarice came in and gave us really excellent minutes as well. So I thought that was one of the differences in the game that we, we felt like our size could help us. Right here. Uh, Terrence Holton, Annenberg Media. Coach, the entire last minute, Baylor was just staying in reach. What were you telling your team to stay, like, to how to stay calm during those timeouts? Um, I mean, as the players said, we've been in a lot of close games and a lot of situations, so I don't think I'm coaching poise. I, I, I don't. I feel like Kenzie's just next level. Yoda's a good word. Um, but Juju, I mean, I think that's what a lot of you guys are alluding to at the free throw. She just has a poise about her, and I think we've been in a lot of situations. So it was less coaching their mentality and more trying to coach what was going on. We obviously gave up that three, but it was more tactical. Like, are we switching? Are we staying? Are we, what do they need to do, and how do we get a stop? Um, because I, I do think they understand what, it, what it's like to be in close games and how to finish a game, how to close it out. Sabrina. Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, you kind of alluded to this earlier. Baylor does such a good job of creating space on offense. Uh, what did you guys have to shift as the game went on to just take away that space? I mean, quite on, there were a couple different things. Quite honestly, I thought their monstrous third quarter had a lot to do with our shot selection and our kind of impatience on offense. Um, they're really good defensively. They're very athletic and they brought a lot of bodies. And I have, like, they know I have so much trust, obviously, Kenzie and Juju in transition and all of our playmakers, but we took a couple tough ones and then, and then it was harder. The floor was unbalanced and they were good. So I really got on them about just making the right play. When you're loose in transition, go. But when we're not, let's run the set, because actually some of our sets were getting us some backdoor looks and freeing us up a little bit better. So a lot of it was on our shot selection. But then um, we knew, I mean, it's a winner go home. Like, do we want to get stops or not? Um, you know, we really locked in. Kay Will coming in uh, helped us a lot uh, because, I mean, Kay, Kayla Padilla just plays her tail off. And she was exhausted. And so Kay Will coming in when Walker got hot was huge. I thought our bigs locking in on their screen coverages. Um, we just made it a little bit tougher on them in the fourth than we did on the third. And it was a balance between our offense getting better and our defense locking in. Come here. David Yapko, it's from the next. Coach, um, I wanted to ask you, you know, the same question about Juju, you know, and her playmaking, you know, not necessarily assists, but, you know, the hockey assist. Yeah. Or, you know, she draws two on the ball and she knows where to pass it to. You know, she's got someone shading her and, and she makes the, the right read. Just, you know, what can you say about, you know, how, how important that is, you know, when, when she's, she gets into that mode, when she's able to make those reads like that? I mean, it's unbelievable what she handles, right? Like, you cannot put one person on her, she will score. You can't really put two. You have to show a lot of bodies. And then, again, for her to end up with 30 and four assists on, on not her best shooting night, I do think she's feeling the floor incredibly well. I don't know if she would describe it that way because that's not, you know, but we, we talk about reads and next level reads and trusting your teammates and just making the right play. And I think she's always been really capable of that. I mean, I don't, I don't think she, she came in only as a scorer, only as a passer or a rebounder, but I think what's evolved is just seeing the, the court and understanding, you know, where she needs to get the ball and what reads she can make out of that. That timeout, the, or the, the conversation at four minutes, it was me asking her, like, I'm trying to empower her more, you know, where can I get it to you? Like, I didn't love her up with it at the top and they could just throw bodies. So that's when I started trying to get it to her at the elbow um, and let her make plays from there. And, and I think that's when she, dimed one to somebody off of that drive and she just gets in her space so for me there's so much how can I get it to make it difficult on defense and easy for her to see her reads and other people do a really good job of playing off of her as well. Lindsay. 
Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Linz, I don't know how much there is left to say about Ken Kenzie at this point, but I'm just wondering about the joy she plays with and, like you said, her, her poise. She's played basketball for a long time, but she hasn't been in these type of situations. So yeah. where does it come from? Uh, I think some of it is innate. Um, she's, she's confident because she also puts the work in. Like you, Your confidence is earned with how much work you do. Uh, some of it... Um, I just think his personality. Um, she loves to hoop. She loves talking basketball. I've said it before. She's going to be an NBA or WNBA GM sooner than later if that's what she wants to do. We talk about that stuff all the time. She really understands it. But I love seeing the joy. Like, she loves to hoop. She'd rather be, you know, doing this, even with a Harvard degree, probably, than schoolwork, right? And so she feeds off the positive energy from everybody else. She leads us. It's really fun. I mean, it's what college basketball is supposed to be. Um, so I think it's a mix of confidence and high IQ and just joy for her teammates and, and playing basketball. Right there. Tiffany Wynn with the LA Times. You, you mentioned Kayla Williams coming off the bench. How much of a lift has she been, especially late in the season, coming back from that offseason surgery uh, for you guys in a, in a time you really need some of that defensive spark? It's been tremendous. I mean, you know, it's she played 32 minutes a game or something last year, right? And then she had four months where she didn't, you know, couldn't do much because of her injury and then come back and we had sort of were formulated at that point, right? Like, and so to her credit, she's been incredibly selfless, team first kid, find, trying to find her rhythm and her role. And, you know, we've talked about, we know it in, our, in that locker room, she is incredibly valued because even in kind of shorter stints, she's come in and won us games. I mean, I can go back to, you know, at Cal, changed the tempo of a game. Uh, Arizona, like she just can do different things on the ball defensively. She can do different things breaking down a defense. And I mean, those eight, 10, 12 minutes, whatever it is, are valuable. And we wouldn't be where we are without any of those wins that has led us to to here. And so it's it's really, I think, a cool story. And I keep telling the players, like, you know, when when you win, no one remembers how many minutes you played or points you scored, really. They remembered, like, who's a winner? Everyone gets a ring if you get a ring, you know? And, and so I think uh, her contributions have been unbelievable for us. Up front and then over there. Uh, Casey Kasliner with the Daily Trojan. Coach, you got Clarice involved early in the game. She had some quality minutes there at the beginning of the second quarter. Considering Baylor is not the tallest team and Clarice obviously had a great game against Kansas, was getting her involved early part of your game plan? For sure. I mean, that, just to speak again about our depth, like, you know, we, we obviously play the starters pretty heavy minutes, but we have quality, you know, depth um, and, we, and we're, really, we're really confident in who we're bringing in. I think they're confident now in their roles. And again, credit to Clarice, it's a different thing to be kind of banging a 6'6 six, six player and then sort of chasing a smaller player in space. And I think she did a really good job of c coming in and giving, giving good minutes. When Katie had some fouls, I played Rhea and Clarice together some. Um, yeah, we have a lot of belief in what she brings to us, and I thought she, she gave really, really good minutes. Jesse Doherty with the Washington Post. I know this isn't anything new, but just the amount of attention Juju gets, not just on the court, but like a camera following her pregame and all of us talking to her all the time. How impressed are you with the way just she handles that and then still performs on top of it? It's hard to put into words. And again, as a, as a freshman, you know, you see it, like the poise is innate for her. Like that's just who she is. She doesn't, like I'd like, you know, we track obviously their, um, their catapults, tra tracks their load and all that. So sometimes she plays so hard, she's always, you know, exerting the most energy. But in terms of you could just like measure someone's kind of pulse, she just is even keeled. And it's really cool. Like the way that she plays, like she cares, she's a winner, but nobody's going to rattle her. Not, you know, officials, not another team. It's, it's a, not teammates. Like it's, it's something to see. And I think it's what makes her a great one and is going to make her one of the greatest ones. The off the court stuff is also unbelievable. I've said this before. Juju is not a reality star who also plays basketball. She is a hooper, a savant, like an artist on the court who is gaining a lot of attention, as she should, but she keeps the main thing the main thing. Um, she's unbelievable with fans. We saw, like, this one girl was crying as she was signing. It was really cool. Like, um, our AD said, wow, it's like a Taylor Swift moment. And then she said, no, it's like a Juju moment, right? We see people in her jerseys. The flocks are coming to see her in Galen Center, and she just handles that beautifully because I think she understands her importance on a larger picture to the community and yet she does that while keeping the main thing the main thing. I credit Juju and I credit her circle around her. I think they really they really have done an unbelievable job. Unfortunately we are out of time coach. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you all. Thank you guys.